so hello so i have been released to do another video so i am grateful to be able to share with you all again today uh with that being said i am going to go ahead and give you what was given to me uh through prayer and fasting uh what the holy spirit revealed to me and so i know a lot of you lately have been struggling with uh, resting in God, trusting him, having faith. Uh, I know I did in the beginning of my stand with my marriage. Uh, a lot of you, I talk about the part when my husband, uh, left, uh, in one of my previous, my very first video that I did on here, uh, and last year in 2019. But actually, if I look back at it, my stand really began in this a year after I got married to my husband in uh, 2017. But I'm not about to go back into that. That's a whole nother different story. Uh, so uh, let's just go ahead and get into what this video is about in particular. And so one of the things that the enemy does is he uses everything he can to distract you from God promise. Uh, the enemy will use people close to you. He will use your job. He'll use every outlet he can to distract you. He'll use people who you thought that you can trust. He'll use people in your inner circle to, to distract you, to attack you, to, to get you off your square, uh, to, to, to manipulate you into believing that what God is calling you, calling you to do is not what you're supposed to be doing. Like he'll cause confusion, strife in any area that he can. And so, um, uh, what I, I, what I'm going to say today, be careful of what you allow in your ear, your eyes, <laughs> and what you allow out of your mouth. Guard your heart at all times. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Always welcome him in your presence. And anytime somebody tell you not to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, that is the spirit of the Antichrist. That is no nothing you want a part of. That is the spirit of the Antichrist. <laughs> Stay far away from it. Um, it you want to be led in the spirit at all times. How can you cut the head off? He's part of the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit is the part of the body of Christ. You do not cut him off any place in anywhere at all, period. That is never acceptable. You want him to be part of your life always, first and foremost. So with that being said, your mouth is a life piece. Uh, always speak life into your situation. Always speak life into yourself. I always speak life into whatever it is you may be faced with. Uh, anytime somebody uh, that you may be around uh, comes to you as a person, as an opposition or, or, or uh, what you're dealing with, shut them down immediately. Renounce what they're saying and speak life into your situation. Because your family member, a friend, associate, Whoever it is. Let me, one thing about me. Nobody in my family. I will not hold a conversation with them. When it's concerning me. Or my marriage. Or me going through my restoration. Because those are going to be the people. That the enemy is going to use. As an outlet. To go against your belief. And standing against your marriage. They're going to be the ones. Who are going to try to go against. Your faith and trust in God. So therefore. That is a no go conversation. For me. So no we cannot. We cannot hold that conversation. That's going to be a conversation that we cannot hold. At all period. So let's just go ahead and shut that down. Okay they were like oh so. Um, uh he ain't came home or she ain't came home. So, or are you going through the divorce yet? Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, it, the sky's blue. That's how I'm going to change that com that conversation or, oh yeah. Uh, how's the kids doing? Whatever you got to do to divert that conversation, do whatever you got to do. Cause that's the conversation that you do not have to indulge in with your family members. You don't have to do that. That's not, you don't have to do that with them. 
And you can change the conversation and you can do it in a respectful way. So don't even do that. So guard your heart by all means. So with that being said, use the wisdom of God when dealing with situations of that. Ask God to give you the wisdom when dealing with uh, family members. And so one of the scriptures that um, God gave me, and so I'm going to go ahead and uh, give that to you. And that is going to be uh, Proverbs 24 and 3. By wisdom, a house is built, and through through understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, it, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Remember that. That's guard your heart. And it's another scripture that, that in this, it'll talk about guarding your heart, and that's in the uh, King James Version. So get that. Get that. So, and so that's, that's one of the things. And, and then let's it, Proverbs, get all up in Proverbs. I'm like, literally, like really get all up in Proverbs here. Um, Proverbs, uh, um, let's go to, uh, Proverbs 15 is another one he had gave me. So Proverbs 15, one, let's go to that one. So this is how you uh, be careful of the words that you speak. Uh, uh, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up strife. So those are you who got to deal with spouses because you have kids. Be careful of the words that you speak out of your mouth towards your spouse. Walk in love, walk in love, walk in love, walk in love. Hold your tongue. Guard your mouth. Guard your mouth. Guard your mouth. Don't. First of all, I don't care if it's another woman involved. Keep your mouth off them too. You can't expect God to work in your life if you're putting your mouth on them. Why are you focused on them? Do you trust God? Because if you trust God, you shouldn't be focused on them. Right now, you should be focused on your relationship with God. That is your that should be your biggest concern right now. Like your biggest concern should not be the other woman or what your spouse is doing with the other woman. It should be your relationship with God or what your 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 wife or what your wife is doing with the other man. Your focus should be the relationship with God. Proverbs 4. The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a per perverse tongue curses the spirit. <sighs> Watch what you speak. Watch what you speak. Hold your tongue. Hold your tongue. Speak words of faith. Speak words of faith. I'm telling you. Speak, speak words of faith. That's the best thing you can do. That is the best thing that you can do is speak words of faith. I'm going to Proverbs 11. Speak words of faith over your relationship. I'm, I'm telling you that that is the best thing that you can do is um, speak words of faith. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Like, look. Don't focus on what you see. Do not focus on the appearance of things. Because God is an inward, outward God. He works on the inside then so that he can change the nature of the of your spouse on the inside. He could change the nature of your the 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 other man, the other woman on the inside to where they'll start to feel guilt from um, being with your spouse. And then they'll desire to have a spouse, their own spouse. Like they'll don't they'll not want them. God, you don't know what God is doing. We don't know the nature of God. And anytime we sit up, anytime we try to figure it out, we only confuse ourselves even more. All we knew is, no, need to know is that he is working all things together for our good. He worked things together for those who are called according to his purpose. And if you're a child of God, then you're called according to his purpose. If you have faith in God, you are called according to his purpose. That That is the nature of God. And then you, you look at Mark, if you look at Mark 11, uh, 23, 
if you have faith in God. Like he, a lot of people, like they, they don't like get the nature of God. They, they lack of what the nature of God is. And then they start doubting like, man, God, you ain't did it yet. When you going to do it, God? You said you was going to restore my marriage. If he told you he going to do it, he going to do it. He got to do something. He can't give you your spouse back the way he was. Do you? God, God is not going. He's not going. He's not going to give you your husband back the same way he left. Or your wife back the same way she left. Y'all not going to be in the same situation that you was in before they left. You're not gonna have the same problems. They're gonna it's gonna be better than what it was before. That's just that's just not how he is. He's not gonna put you in the same old mess. Like, you gotta understand, like, when he does things, he does things in to where it's gonna be a new thing. When he say you become a new creation in him, that means your marriage is going to be a new marriage in him. So that means um, you're going to have a new husband. You're going to be a new wife to him or a new, uh, um, or she's going to be a new wife to you. Like you're going to be new to each other. So first of all, God needs to do some work in you. He needs to do some work in your spouse. So quit trying to, 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 uh, allow your flesh to rise up because you're missing them. I miss my husband too. I'm not going to be like, I don't miss my husband. Yeah, I miss him, but I have learned to rest in God. So, um, the, the emotional part of me no longer rises up. And so I'm able to say, I'm at that point where I'm able to say, God, I thank you for restoring my marriage. Lord, I thank you for, for, for my kingdom husband. Lord, I thank you for renewing my mind. I thank you for renewing my husband's mind. I thank you for a new heart. I thank you for a new heart for my husband. Those type of things is what I, that, that is where I'm at, um, with, with my relationship with God, because it's me thanking God for changing my nature and also changing my husband's nature. Because if we sit up here and we be like, oh, well, what he did, what he did, what they did, what she did, what she did. When do we acknowledge the fact that we need to change too? Because it takes two in every marriage for it to work. Because the moment that you submit to God and you actually truly allow him to heal you from the inside out, then he is able to show you yourself and he is able to work in you. So stop letting your, your stinking thinking outweigh your faith and allow your faith to work and allow God to work and allow him to show you his true nature so you can become a new creation in him. So then when your spouse starts to see you, he starts to see the light of Christ in you. You start to be a new person in Christ. It shows. You ain't got to tell your spouse that, oh, well, I, I'm not the same person that I was when you left. He going to see it. You ain't got to tell her you changed. They going to see it. Because that's God changing the nature of who you are. Don't link up with the wrong people. Don't allow the wrong stuff in your ear and your eye gate. Ask God to reveal the, the, uh, the wisdom, his wisdom to you, I should say. Not the wisdom, his wisdom to you. So that you are always operating in him. But uh, the one thing that I want to point out to you, because I don't want to do too long of a video because long videos can be draining, right? But uh, so let's go ahead to his, his faithfulness, his, his promises to us. Like 
this is this is deep. So look, he says, and this is Mark eleven twenty three. Truly, I tell you, who serves or say to this mountain, be lifted up, thrown into the sea, does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place. It will be done. What was those last words? It will be done. That means it will, God will be done. If you believe, have faith, God's will be done. You better get your Amplified Bible, Amplified app, whatever you need to do. Study yourself to show approve. Have faith. Don't let your stinking thinking corrupt your faith. Do not let your stinking thinking corrupt your faith. God is working even when it looks like he ain't working. Declare, decree that your your wife, your husband has returned home. Declare it in the atmosphere because we walk by faith and not by sight. Do not focus on the negativity because that is saying that your problem is way bigger than God. And that is not so. You tell your circumstances how big God is. That's just how it is. Like, it is what it is. God is bigger than our circumstances. So I am.